shake handles your uncle Mike me boy sh Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of What's So Funny, a show that talks about the funny with the people who make it happen. Now, our guest this week has done everything there is to do in this country and jolly old England. He's a friend of the show, although it's been a while. I remember seeing him for the first time at the Blue Bridge Comedy Festival many years ago in Victoria, B.C. Please welcome Mike Wilmot. Hey, what was that festival? Yeah, We'll talk about it later. I'll I'll shut up. Keep going. It doesn't exist anymore. Of but you know not. who does? Who? Our main host. This guy wow. is so excited that school's back in session. I did the introduction last week, but this time it's because he gets to yell at kids who aren't even on his lawn. It's Guy McPherson. Oh, Sam, you and your repeating. I didn't repeat this one. Yeah, it was a theme and variation. That's yes. okay. Nice to talk to you. And uh, you too, Mike. It, he was talking about uh, the hi. Blue Bridge. Blue Bridge Comedy Festival in Victoria. How long I, ago were we talking? Yeah, when uh, was that? I saw you there, too. Seven years ago? Oh, Christ. Uh, the way you, you know, I'm so old now, I'm thinking, wow, this is probably well <laughs> back in the late 80s. No, no, 70, yeah, yeah. It was recent. Yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> it's Dan Quinn's show. <laughs> yeah, it Dan was, Quinn. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, of course. It was in a club. That was a festival. Yeah, it was at Heckler's. Yeah, I, I think that's so cute now that somehow you get your hands on some uh, government money and you call a, uh, <laughs> what we used to call a one nighter and, and turn it into a festival. That's 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 remarkable. There was a dirty show. And of course, you fit well into that. But yes. Brent, Brent Butt was on it. And so was Ryan Hamilton, two of the cleanest guys. <laughs> I know. And Ryan and I have been friends since. Oh, yeah. He's a great guy. He's a sweetheart. He's actually, he's, he's, he's uh, he makes me nervous. He's like, what, he's that nice that he's, he's come on. He's poisoning dogs. You, you know it. You know, there's something there. But yeah, when, when Sam said you were a friend of the show, I was thinking Mike probably doesn't even remember doing this show. I don't even remember the year. It was a long time ago and we did it after your show at the comedy mix or maybe it was yuck yucks back then and pete johansson was sitting there and they were cleaning up around us it was you know one in the that morning started, i think that was early mix or at least that might have been when mark or mike breslin ran it i probably yeah hey i'm doing pretty good you know i think i think something <laughs> you know maybe this time off was a good thing yeah, your your brain has has rejuvenated itself. Yeah, I've, I've I've completely forgotten my act, but I'm remembering my life. When was the last time you performed? Uh, actually, like Wednesday. Oh, okay. What <laughs> yeah, I I I've never stopped. I I will do any. I'm a whore. I'll do anything for. I I've been doing uh, Zoom things. Now I've heard terrible things about Zoom. It's not bad. I like it. Yeah, it's I'm on. Look, I'm talking to people in Ireland. It's four o'clock in the afternoon on my porch, talking into just talking shit into my phone, and and they're loving it. Whoever is watching it, <laughs> it's not stand up. I don't know what it's stand up in a way, but it's it's not it's not tradition. I like to I, I I you know it's a porch I'm, I'm a show. freak. This is what I do anyway. Sit on your porch and make people laugh. And talk shit. Yeah. If I can do that in a nightclub, wonderful. If I can do it on my phone, wonderful. It's my disorder. It's, it's perfect. So wait a second. Did you put it on? No, Sorry. Christ. No, people people get in touch with me because they know I'm a freak on my porch. They're, they're just, let's <laughs> let's see if Michael do it. Of course he'll do it. Of course. What he, else is he going to do? He won't see. What is he going to do? He says yes to everything. You said you performed on Wednesday. Was this another porch show or was this like. No, no. This was this uh, Joanna or Puff Mama is a uh, a marijuana. uh, uh, She had a a, an underground show in Toronto. It's quite, quite popular. Ari Shafir, a bunch of dudes did it. And when it was illegal, the saddest thing happened when it when it when they legalized marijuana, they basically put her out of business (laughs) because it used to be this underground kind of thing, you know. And it, which sort of ruined the sexiness of marijuana in general, but uh, uh, see, the, it was in a, uh, um, it was like in a food court uh, in the, this little Chinese business area, and I was standing on what I think is normally a fountain, 
And uh, I think I was standing where the fountain would normally be. So I'm the center of attention. There's this shrubbery and, and lovely little uh, pretend rocks around me, just like a nice, uh, just like a nice fountain. As I, I did jokes. And everyone's sitting there in masks? No, they wouldn't be. Well, they're masks. They, they, yeah, it's outdoors. Oh, okay. And uh, you, dogs are howling, and uh, there's a lot of gang activity. Here's my question about outdoor shows, uh, especially during this time, is that uh, there might be a public walking by that isn't part of the show. Is that correct? No. There's a guy in town. I do his shows on Friday nights in a park in the West End. And he makes it sound like it's a political thing, like, oh, what are you woke? No, we're just walking down the street. We don't want to hear this film. Exactly. And you have some. <laughs> this has nothing to do with being woke, you asshole. I'm walking my dog. <laughs> That's what I was wondering because you are, you know, you like your filth. And no, but I, I, I know what I'm doing. Like this, I'm not going out of my way. I'm getting it. Look, the people that are walking their dogs are snickering. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm 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 a pro. I'm not out there just talking. I'm not trying to scare people, which a lot of the uh, the the guys that always blame. Uh, oh, what are you? What? Most of those guys are just really shitty. Yeah, it's, you're funny first, right? Funny like, first. That's what they forget what the hell the words are. With it's funny first. Somebody yeah. might be taking their kids for a walk. You know, seven, eight, ten years old. But no, the show is at ten o'clock at night. If their kids, it's pedophiles at ten. Come on. <laughs> I'm not even on till 11 o'clock. If you're there with your kids at 11, they're going to hear the cunt word. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. One there you go. Yeah. And it, it says on the sign, we, we put up a big sign. That would, that would be great. We should actually put up a big yeah. sign. It just says, Mike will say cunt. We'll say cunt. Past 10. <laughs> Past 10. <laughs> it's a city watershed, right? That's right. And, and uh, someone, I remember I did a, TV, a British show. I hosted it called, uh, uh, I think it was called Comedy Blue. It was on late night British television. And I had a couple of bits with the cunt word in it. And uh, uh, we had a we had lawyer, like a, a real lawyer. And uh, right before we went to air, we shot it in Brighton in, in front of this uh, big crowd. And uh, right before I, I went on stage, uh, the producer looked over at me and said, I just got off the phone. With 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 the lawyer, cunts ago, <laughs> and that's still the funniest use of the word ever. And this is a professional man a talking to a lawyer, telling me it cunts ago. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Get up there, kid. Cunts ago. It's still a swear word there, but it doesn't have the same shock value as it does in North America, right? Uh, yeah, but now because uh, I, it's all one big thing. To, you know, fifteen. 20 years ago, it, it, you couldn't say it here at all. Yeah. Hmm. But now, you know, uh, thanks to Peaky Blinders, you know, that, that's, you know, it, and, 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 and Deadwood. <laughs> I think there's, there's pre-Deadwood and post-Deadwood world, and we're in a post-Deadwood world. Well, I, well, you, I had trouble with that one. <laughs> you were a trailblazer, too. Don't, don't sell yourself short on this. I, I love why I hear that kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. You, you were out there doing really uh, horrible shit way before any hero. <laughs> I don't throw that word around a lot, but you've been you've been saying really rude things to me for years. One uh, great memory I have of you is remember those old uh, comedy festivals that Will Davis used to put on. Oh, what a yeah! <laughs> what a yeah, yeah! And there was a show. There was an industry showcase, so everybody was like, "Oh, I might get a chance to be on TV." It was a Tom Lee music, uh -huh. and holy fuck! I actually remember and you this. Didn't care? You couldn't find the place. <laughs> yeah, I know it was on the mezzanine or second floor of a music store. Yeah. I, I was amazed whatever few people showed up, they found the fucking place. I remember that. But you didn't care oh, I that it was an uh, industry showcase. No. You just did your same act. Oh, I couldn't. I, what, what the fuck else am I going to do? <laughs> if they're in front of me, they're getting it. That That's funny. it. Yeah. That's it. But, I mean, you must have. You've done lots of shows in England and in Canada, like galas at the Montreal Fest. But you must oh, have. All over the world so far. You know, where where it's not a go where they say, Hey, no, you can't say this. And so you must have, um, cleaned up your act. No, nope. eh, well, for just for laughs, uh, uh, I did a, a big show on British TV where, uh, 
they said, look, Mike, we need 12 minutes uh, for television, but we'll give you 20 minutes to do. So it was at the, um, uh, <laughs> the, the Apollo Hammersmith, which is this beautiful, like three, 4,000 people. Right. And uh, I did 12 for them, then did a fake a good night, <laughs> and then turned around, came back on, and did uh, eight for me, and ripped the room <laughs> to shit. And it was just <laughs> filth. Right. It was me and Tommy Tiernan. I remember that uh, very fondly. That was great. I did the same thing actually in Halifax. And the, the woman that was producing the program said, we, we love your dirty stuff. So do like eight for TV, but we'll give you like 15 minutes. So have a little fun. And I uh, then I would oh, have a little that's fun. Great. And always yeah. had more fun. It always was funnier. It always was. It always will be. I think that's what dirty comics always sort of dig that weirdness of like, come on, fuck off. Really? <laughs> well, it's... But the nasty show itself in Montreal, yeah. right? Years ago, there was three of them uh, back to back Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. You couldn't get near the fucking building. They sold out before any other show. And like four years ago, they were doing 16 <laughs> of them. No other show does that kind of business. No. Yeah, that's right. And now, you know, now, uh, yeah, it, we're living in a cable world now. It's okay to be. Now, filthy. when you, I mean, I have a book here. You mentioned Tommy Tiernan. I Tommy bet you Tiernan, do. who was a great guy uh -huh. to talk to. I love talking to him. Yeah, sweetheart. And yeah, so sweetheart. I'm holding in my hands Stuart Lee's "How I Escaped from My Certain Fate: The Life and Deaths of a Stand-Up." Oh, right, right. I know where you're going. He mentions you in it, but he says, "Where is it here?" Um, on the bills of the pathetic, nasty show at the Montreal Comedy Festival, Mike, a great artist, is annually misfiled alongside the usual predictable American racists, homophobes, and misogynists. And yet this good-natured honey bear of a man seems not to mind at all and just gets on quietly with the business of rendering their noisy, whining irrelevant. <laughs> so he doesn't have much good to say about those nasty shows except for you. <laughs> yeah, fuck him though. No. I look, yeah, <laughs> I I Stu and I have known each other for a long, long time, and he, I'm a, I he adores me. Like I, it's like it's freaky. I did a I did a run at the Soho Theater, and three of the nights he's there. He he <laughs> studies me. He still doesn't know how I'm doing. Like I'm doing a trick. I, I, I just, I don't think I'm being filthy. Right. I, I, I never have thought that. I'm just talking the way I talk and the way I think. I've never thought of this as uh, writing a bit or doing a piece or pissing off any, but I can understand why people walk out of shows. I'm, 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 I'm you know, I, I do this because this is a condition. <laughs> this is something I'm glad there was at one point six months ago. Stand up that I can do this in. I was, I lucked out in that department, but I, 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 I don't believe in dirty kind clean kind, or all that bullshit. It, it's That's like, it. you know, R and B blues music. It, it, I, I, bigger things, everything else is, I don't like the categorization of it. It's like, you're, it's interesting that you put it up like that, that uh, you're just doing comedy. Yeah. You're doing what you think is funny. The idea of writing a dirty specific show is such an English idea that right. I'm going to prepare an hour of dirty material to present. Yes. It's like you're playing a fucking character the whole time. And that is British comedy. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, they're strange, the Brits. They, they really take it as, as theater. And yeah. many of my generation of, of British comedians started off as poets. That's not right. So, huh. so no, that's, that's that's a bit weird. I, I worked with strippers. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. And I think a lot of them, and a lot of them, just love the North American uh, accent, and just as much as we like their accent. So there's a lot of that too. But it's interesting that um, <clears throat> Stuart Lee would come and and study you, and, and just curious how you're doing this. And I I think back to when I was in university, and I would go to these rock clubs, I'm not at all interested in thrash metal or I don't like it, but I was interested in it. And I would go and I would watch and I'd just be like, I don't hear anything here, but I'm fascinated that they all know what to do at the same time. 
No, I'm like that with uh, that's weird. I was listening. There's a, a band, like a jam band called Goose. Yeah. And I think they have like two albums. <laughs> and their second was like live. And they're really great. They're all musicians and they, they play fantastic. But the audience knew when to snap their fingers and it's <laughs> out of nowhere. How does you only have two fucking albums? <laughs> How did you know that? that? That was incredible. So that's all. They're they're you know they're dodging the record game, I guess. Hey, Mike, it's um, time for our cold read uh, portion of the show. If you scroll all scroll right. down to the bottom of the page. Is there a pay? Oh, is that why I'm watching this fucking thing? I don't even, you know, I, I, I changed the light bulb. I thought I was actually going to be on something. Oh, you got all prettied up? Uh, uh, okay. Well, okay. Uh, well, you know, as much as we can. I have no page to go down to. What What are we doing? Oh, uh, just below Sam, there's some writing there. Uh, recording in, oh. Uh, I'll say Guy Man 22. Uh, type here for chat? <laughs> yeah, just above that. Is Guy Man 22? This is Mike Wilmot. Yeah, that's and the you're one. Listening to... Oh, right. That stuff. <laughs> Here we go. Off the top. This is Mike Wilmot. And you're listening to What's So Funny on CFRO 100.5 FM hyphen Vancouver co op radio. Oh, you started out so well, and then you got. I can go the other Slow way. Down. I can I can start like that and build no, that up. That was perfect. We got we got what we needed. This is how much are getting for this again? <laughs> what was that? I just love doing that. I I listen to a lot of podcasts where you'll always hear that cheap joke by the guest. How much am I getting for this again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, somebody asked me what somebody asked one? me recently, do the guests get paid? And I was like, Are you kidding me? What? No, they no, they're just yeah. bored. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Hey, you know, talking they're about the bored. weird uh, Brit style of comedy, uh, also it goes to Australia. And there was this uh, review or article on you in an Aussie paper, and and it mentioned that that your routine has no name and no theme. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you don't need to <laughs> oh, name right. your show. I hate. It. I've always hated that since Edinburgh. Yeah. My my first Edinburgh, they they were all on me for that. And no, fuck off. This is an hour of me. So call it Mike Wilmot. Yep. Or call it an hour of me. No, that would be too An hour of me. I, my first one I ever did where I got a title because I was doing a theater. And I I, you know, I used Uncle. Because uh, all the young comics and some of the older ones, which is pathetic, uh, call me Uncle Mike. <laughs> so I said, and I've always liked that. Wow. Because uh, I I I I I, I enjoy uh, helping and 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 being positive in this fucking bullshit game. Oh, that's nice. So the although saying positive in this bullshit game was sort of a ridiculous <laughs> thing to say, one canceled the other one out. The show was called Uncle, or you were Uncle Mike. No, Uncle. And people were not complaining, but they would say at the end, that wasn't about anyone's <laughs> uncle. You know, like, uh, yeah, well, fuck off. I don't care. <laughs> we could uh, brainstorm your next hour in uh, Australia or England. You could call it. I remember I did no one name and no theme. In Ed- I had three beers on stage, and I would say, this is my first Edinburgh. And I would say, uh, when I got to a certain point in the third beer, I'd go, well, that's an hour. <laughs> And someone gave me a review that, if anything, go see Mike Wilmot's Amazing Beer Clock. And I actually had several uh, Dutch couples in one night who were there to see an amazing beer clock and were quite disappointed it was just some English guy talking too much. <laughs> that's that's what cool. playing here uh, is all about. That, yeah, that's, that's, I, thought, I thought of another name. You could call it My Father's Penis. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> well, you see, I didn't do that bit long enough. Uh, my father's cocktail. Very proud of that one. I bet. That was at the nasty show. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. I, I, I how did that go? Something about my dad's cock. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. He had passed away, and we were talk. I was talking to Kate Davis, and Kate's a dirty comic, former guest on this program. Yeah. Oh, p- perfect. And she's Jewish, and we were talking about. Uh, she goes, "Is she?" Uh, you're not Jewish. Are you circumcised? Yeah, I'm circumcised. He goes, uh, are you Jewish? I said, no. 
was your dad circumcised? And that's when I, I had that thing of like, I can't remember the last time I saw my dad's cock. And I was just on stage <laughs> talking and it turned into a bit. But it just happened to be dirty. It just happened, but it was more important than just my dad's dick. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was about a son reaching out to his father <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I mean, that's a great point. I have no idea if my dad was or not circumcised yeah and maybe it's a good thing well, then i talked about him taking me to the pool where all the naked men and you're a certain height where the the dicks yeah. are just in your face and they're talking are you harry's boy and i would say like no giant talking penis it would see this isn't dirty no who got hurt who got hurt <laughs> well i mean there was a kid at dick level right that was me yeah. oh so well, i got hurt point, yeah. you're right good point good point <laughs> <laughs> Completely forgot that was me. <laughs> Holy Christ, thanks. That was great. What do you do uh... this with all the comedians? <laughs> <laughs> is this what is this what the show is based on? We're gonna look right into your fucking act. And we're yeah. Gonna change, we're gonna change you, Wilmot. That's the whole point. Like we got I you like obviously it. you have a dirty act. There's something wrong with you. We have to fix it right now. <laughs> Thank right you. Now. <laughs> This, I knew I knew there was a hook. They all have these things have hooks. That's a it's good an hook. intervention. Yeah, when, That's after right. anyone appears on this program, they come out as a clean comic. <laughs> What's so funny now? That's what it should be called. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but you know, I was always amazed, too, uh, of the old men in locker rooms, and they'll just carry on a conversation without even putting a towel on. It's like, get me out this of here. Very, that, I, 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 weirdly, I, I, I've gone to this, I've gone to the YMCA in London because, uh, I'm trying to stay fit, but as an older person, uh, it like a health scare way, not like a, you know, not modeling. <laughs> better get fit. And, and it's all full of me's. It's just full of a bunch of just fucking bagged out, dead dicked old men. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's liberating. There's no posing. There's farting, ugly, naked, fucking scarred up, uh, just dried up, dead men. <laughs> I'm a member of the YMCA here in Vancouver, and it is not that. Oh, oh is it? A, is, is is the Y in Van? Is I bet it's. Is it posers? Oh, it's. There's a lot of hard bodies in the bathroom. Oh, what are you doing? What well, are you... I, I, I'm just going to watch. No, no, no but... you go. No, you not you. <laughs> I'm saying what, <laughs> if you're going to be beautiful, get the fuck out of the Y. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, go join Planet Fitness or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, and sit on a machine with your phone. I don't go to any, so. Uh... Oh, you're good, good. I hope I hope you never have a health Yeah, so let's, hey, let's talk about that, because the last time I saw you, you looked like somebody else, and uh, I know you lost a ton of weight. It was great. Everyone thought I was dying. It was fantastic. I wouldn't tell anyone I was actually fit. So they thought, like, oh, you got cancer or something? Yeah, or yeah, AIDS cancer. I got that one. Like a combo <laughs> of the two. Because you lost a ton of weight. How much did you lose? I don't know. I didn't count. Oh. I just wanted it off me. I got type 2 diabetes, and I didn't want it. Yeah, and so here's the thing. I know you changed your lifestyle. You quit drinking. You quit smoking. You started eating well, gross smoke. vegetables. Oh, yeah. you tell me. I had, you know, I, I had tabbouleh today again. Oh, I don't even know what that is. You don't want to know. You don't yeah, want to know. I don't want you to know. know. It's, it's uh, things that uh, I've never had put together. <laughs> and, uh, and so, like, you still have type 2 diabetes? Is that something that will always it's, stay with you? You can keep in a box. You'll always have it. But it's like a snake in a box. Right now, it's in the box. But if I if I let my uh, guard down, it, mm -hmm. it can come up and bite you in the ass again. So I I, I just run a lot. I yeah. got into it. I got into it. And and you're still running. Like, did you run this week or today? I, I, yeah, this morning. I, every day. How far? Oh, uh, minimum five kilometers. Minimum. Minimum. But I've been doing this now five six years now. Well, not. I've been doing this for the last couple of years. It took me two or three years to get to this. Yeah. Great. I wasn't in any hurry, but uh, yeah, I call it running, by the way. Uh, it, 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 if you were to witness it, you might not, uh, you might not call it running. Well, it's still 5k, <laughs> whether you're walking fast or running. No, 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 we're not cut. We're not talking walking fast. Don't jump there. Okay. It's, it, it's, it's more of a slinking. It's like, a, it's, it's huh. an amazing slinking kind of motion 
People think I'm drunk. I think that's what they 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 look at me like I'm drunk when I go by. Well, you're probably they're probably not wrong. No, well, you know, I I I am coming out of a bar. That's what that's my starting point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you first started uh, performing with your new weight loss, uh, like people who were there to see you must have gone, wait, th- who's this guy? Every night. Until you opened your filthy mouth. Every night in uh, in uh, Australia, where they sort of know me, uh, I would come on stage and you would hear gasps. <laughs> and I would uh, tell them that it, when I eventually told them that I wasn't cancer, I was intentionally, people would actually be going, see, I told you, see. Oh, so I would actually, I would actually start conversations with people in the audience. Yeah. A lot of my oldest friends didn't, didn't recognize cause I lost weight too quick. Cause I was terrified. Yeah. Is that, is that uh, healthy to lose it that quick? No, not at all. No, not, not, not even close. So, uh, I, but I was, like I said, I was scared. Yeah. It was a, a perfect health scare. So, uh, scared thin. The good thing is I turns out I loved me way more than I thought. <laughs> Now, did you love yourself the most when you lost the weight? Uh, I'm still not. Uh, I'm, I'm still. I still don't think this is me. Okay. Yeah. But you. You know, I still. I still want, like. I. I. I dig the fitness part because it's. It, it's like being high. You got the runners high. Yeah, I've never had this physical feeling before. Like it. You know, it's. It just. It's really strange. Like I was on a bus. And when I got to the, the I, I almost missed my st- uh, stop. I jumped out, out of the seat and like flew across the room. It's like, it's like, you know, you ever see that? Like when Spider-Man just starts learning how to be Spider-Man. It's like that, but not, 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 not as dramatic. Uh, yeah. So, so you've kept it off. You haven't sort of gone back up. I, a little, and a then little, gone yeah. and then a little, but during this pandemic, I've just been exercising the whole time. A lot of it. So, uh, yeah, it went from, like, scraggly looking to, like, I look fit. It's freaking me out. But you're doing well now, health-wise. and uh, Oh, yeah. Like, I've never, yeah. I'm, I'm not as funny, it, it, but that's what, that's what happens. That's what happens. I'm paying for it. See, now, right there, see how that died? I'm actually still as funny. <laughs> you know what I, I can can't, you. I really like about this? Yeah, what? I can see the little, uh, like, wire detector. Kind of uh, yeah, uh, things jump up and down on the screen, and I'm I'm it's slowly hypnotizing me. <laughs> yeah, I know you. <laughs> you know, look away every so like often. I'm watching my own work. Yeah, like what? Oh, look, look, and you can tell physically how much I talk compared to you two. <laughs> <That's the key. laughs> like, and I do a lot of talk. Well, that, that's it's mostly me, guys. As you said, you will answer our questions with a side of funny. That's right. So far, I have I don't have I answered any of these questions? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we we're, we're off to the we're off the health topic now. Good, it's boring as fuck. <laughs> and uh, what I find interesting, it's a real testament to your act that guys like Brent, but Derek Edwards, Erwin Barker loved you, uh, even though. There, but you're saying it's all just comedy. They don't care whether it's clean or it's dirty or whatever, right? Look, some of my best friends in comedy are some of the best comedians in the business, and and I, you know, I got their respect. It, 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 it means the world to me, you know, it, it, because I just think I'm, a, you know, I'm like a, a you know, a, a Rickles kind of guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But to the fact that Rickles, his best friend, was. Uh, was Bob Newhart. That's right. So it, it does work. It does work. Really clever guys and really dopey, dirty guys get along famously. Mm-hmm. Norm McDonald's got Artie Lang. Yeah. You know, and uh, I got Edwards or Rich Hall, who's like brilliant. Uh, Lewis oh, Black Hall. goes nuts for me. Like, like they, you know, it's, I, I know this is, this is horrible. I'm tooting my own horn, but I, I've been <laughs> alone for, for like a long time. <laughs> I haven't heard an audience like me in a while, kids. You're just going to have to live with this. I'm sorry. Well, we talked about you when Derek Edwards was on a month or two ago. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys. I'm are- amazed you had that man talk into a computer. It was- that, that amazes me. I think he amazed himself. 
did he do okay? Did did he talk into the like into the hello? Like who was was it like that kind of thing? <laughs> yeah. Are you in there? I'm getting a lot of that. It was uh he was great as he always is. Haven't seen him in a longer time than I haven't seen you. So that's been a while. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's hard to get cuz he he um cuz no one can reach him. He does those soft seat tours. And the rest of the time he's doing corporate stuff. And yeah, he's like the Canadian Bill Murray. You just can't get a hold of him. <laughs> I thought Bill Murray had a, a public number that anyone could call. Yes, and, and a, like a post office box where he'd pick stuff up. Yeah. Hey, one of the greatest, you know, I've been doing this show since 2004. Wow. One of the, Did they have those then? Did they have pond? Were they called they pond? They were just things? starting. Just starting. Wow. And one of the greatest stories was when I had. In studio, back when we could do that, uh, Craig Campbell and Phil Nickel. Oh, and they told me a story about the, the mistake they made of going casually drinking with you at Teatros and drinking Czech absinthe. Oh, oh that was in that was in yeah that was in Soho. And uh, yeah, not, not, good, good things don't. I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So I had I don't I don't real I I know that story. He sent me that link. Oh, perfect. Because uh, Phil, I was staying at his place last time I was in London. Yeah. Like, he was my he's, I've known Philip for a thousand years, and uh, I didn't know I was fine. I didn't know these guys are lightweights. That's what that that's that whole story is. That's what that both is. of them are really shit drunks. Yeah, and if anyone hasn't heard that, uh, it ends with... Uh, one of them's in jail, and the other one's covered in blood in his in his tub, isn't it? Yeah, he was sleeping in his tub, and he was scream puking, and Phil was in jail. And then yes. the next day, they get a call from Mike, hey, fellas, great seeing you last night. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I was up early, I ate. <laughs> I also, but they are white, and they still are yeah. horrible drinkers. <laughs> what makes a good drinker, Mike? Uh, well, you, you don't do what they did. Well, yeah. you don't lose control. Okay. You don't. Okay, a, a very, very quick story, if you don't mind, please. And this is this is um, within the last uh, two or three years, I stopped drinking beer. I started drinking red wine. And I have to say it that way, that old, you know what, like Christopher Plummer, when he pretends to be English, he's got that noise like a red wine. <laughs> so I was drinking a lot of red wine. I stopped, I stopped drinking beer f for a while. And I decided uh, for some reason to drink red wine. And I started drinking a lot of red wine. <laughs> I really liked red wine. And I started, I would fall down a lot. I started falling down, falling out of chairs. I would get so drunk thinking I was like looking gorgeous with my horrible teeth color and just smashed on one. So I came, Kenny Robinson's um, birthday was a roast at the comedy bar. Can't remember going on stage. I went home in Sandra Bataglini's coat and I fell off the toilet on my head twice. <laughs> Apparently. I was told my wife followed me though. And she explained all I did. About three days later, I met uh, my barber, who I've had for 30 years, Sam. And he's cutting my hair, and he looks at this huge gash bump on my skull <laughs> and said, oh, my goodness, what what is this? And I went, I, I was drinking red wine. And he made like a noise, like a tch, 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 And he looked at the mirror, at me in his chair, going, don't drink red wine. <laughs> so when your barber... Tells you not to drink wet, so I stopped drinking red wine. I went to I'm now I'm drinking very light beer. There's there's hardly anything in it. Just an empty can, really. You, you gotta you <laughs> gotta drink something, I guess. Cause it's your clock, right? It's how you te keep time on stage. Yes. And remember, yeah, if your barber tells you to quit drinking something, don't. You gotta quit. Just quit. It's yeah. It was it I I don't remember coming home that night. I just remember Elaine yelling because I fell off the toilet on my head. <laughs> uh, Try and the whole time thinking I was cool. Yeah, drinking red wine. And your wife thinking otherwise. Oh yes, hugely. She's just sneaking in the back door right now. 
It's not a visual thing, dear. You can come in. They have an added thing. It's fine. <laughs> I read also that you said that you are afraid of everything, and she's not afraid of much. Is that right? Oh, like yes. what are you afraid of? What yes. are your biggest fears? Everything. I think. I think you nailed it. Pretty well. Everything. I'm anxious about everything. Oh yeah. Um, I, I. I. I'm. I, I'm my neighbors think I'm snobbish, but I just don't I'm I don't like small talk. I'm I'm scared of everything. And my wife isn't. She she's she she's she's my uh she's my warrior uh, human that walks ahead of me and pushes people out of the way. <laughs> and uh, it's been like that for thirty four years now. She's not I, I, scared of anything, least of all no. you. Yeah. Oh oh my god, no. And luckily both of our children uh, well, they're her kids, but they're mine. Uh, uh, and neither one of them uh, are, are afraid of me. It's like I, I have three three uh, Don Rickles. <laughs> the three women in my uh, family are all uh, Don Rickles. Yeah, and it's like a roast of Mike Wilmot every day. They oh. just zing you. Whenever I have, uh, uh, whenever I, I sound as though I'm enjoying my own company too much, uh, I, I'm I'm told <laughs> you're shot down pretty I'm, quick. I'm 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 put in my. I remember at Spirits Bar and Grill uh, in Toronto. It's great open mic, ran forever. Uh, Rob Williams did a whole bunch of comics. The Patton did it, and um, the the young comics were always quite nice to me, and I love it. I eat it all up. <laughs> and my my eldest daughter Teresa just looked at me and went, "You know, they all love you. They don't know you." <laughs> <laughs> we know you and we still love you. So that's that's basically uh, my life. <laughs> yeah, that's worth more. Way more to be still liked. So you say they were your your wife's kids. How old were they when you came into their life? I uh Shannon, the youngest one who's now about to have her third child was 3. Just turned three, and Teresa just turned five. So, did you ever have to have a talk with them about what you do on stage, nope. or did, was that nope. just a carryover from what you it, were like at home? It just, it just happened. They, it was so gradual, and yeah, and they, and they are, they were raised in the circus. Like they, they know everybody. Yeah, they've come to the festivals. Like I've flown them out to Ireland and England. Uh, they've been to the Just for Laughs more than most Canadian comics have. <laughs> yeah. So no, they're 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 part of this uh, this stupid circus. There was a time I thought you lived in the UK, but you would just go there for periods of time and always come back. Uh, well, well, like six. The most I was out there was seven months out of the year. Yeah, so, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't let go. I like being a Canadian, and 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 I tell you, there's there's a plenty of work in Canada as a stand up comedian if you only work here three months a year. Yeah, you're busy as hell over a three-month period. And that'll last you for the whole year. <laughs> and if you can go to Britain for the other uh, the other amount of time, you're fine. That's what Britain yeah. was and is. Yeah. Like, that's where my career is. And Canada is just a great place to have fun. Do you still, or will you, I guess, when, when you're allowed to go back there and perform? I'm technically booked for March, but I don't put much... Uh, much faith in, in hmm. england in england ireland scotland uh i want to get back out to the middle east yeah i know you've played there and like do you know how many countries you played uh no but weirdly enough derek's got one of those uh, orange peel world maps on the wall at the cabin yeah and he just gave me a, a thing of pins once and went all right where have you been kind of thing and um I've been to a lot of countries. I I, I forgot to Italy, huh. which, 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 he, which he sort of ripped into me. Like, how who how, who the fuck forgets Italy? <laughs> like like you know, but uh, everywhere. And we're talking, yeah, like uh, um, and, and Phil Nickel. We were just talking about Phil from Courting the Jews. But Phil has played. He's gone all through India, Indonesia. It's 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 remarkable. And and the British comedian. A lot of the Americans forget this, and, and, and North Americans, um, their their whole tour goes, you know, throughout uh, through most of Europe, and into Asia, and into the Middle East. Like uh, the, the 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 world's your oyster if, if you play. Yeah, it. I mean, but they have so many countries within the space of you know a province that we have. Oh, that's yeah. true. 
That that that's true, and 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 it's uh, it's weird that way as well. The, the the way they talk about how far things are away compared to can I I try to explain to them you can stick the whole lot of them right into the Great Lakes and they they don't believe me. Yeah, I know. It's I, I remember Brent Butt's line about this was at the Urban Well. He said you could tell somebody from Europe that you can get in a fl- in a plane and fly eight hours in one direction and not be at the other end of the country. And they say, how small are your planes? Yeah. yeah that's very good. That's very good. It's true. I, I tell them it, it takes longer to fly from one end to the, uh, the other. And they think, yeah, well, you, 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 well, there's propellers, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but this, this is what I'm curious about. You're afraid of everything and yet you travel and there's got to have been dangerous or at least fear inducing situations. Maybe, okay. Maybe, no, I'm more anxiety oh, afraid of, of imaginary things that haven't happened. Right. That might happen that rarely do. That's I'm terrified of that. My life, I'm just in it. It's at the moment. So it doesn't make that much sense to be scared at the so moment. So like it's all the imaginary shit that hasn't happened yet that frightens the like fuck. Like doing out. all the these little prop planes uh on on no name airlines. Oh no. Uh, that, that, that never, never mind. No. I, I'm th- no, we're, we're talking all bigger oh, okay. stuff, all in my mind. Yeah, I I, li- I don't live for the moment, but I do live in in yeah. the moment. So would it be only because would that's it be like live. you have a big TV spot and you get anxious about that? No, no. Weirdly enough, one of the best times I ever had on television doing stand up, uh, I wrote some stuff for my friend who was on. He was hosting the gala, and he said uh, I wrote him a couple of bits. And he's reading it on the teleprompter, and I'm in the there's a, a laneway outside. This is the Saint Denis Theater, where all the 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 the, uh, the trucks were, the, all the TV trucks and sound trucks and everything. And they have them on the big screen, and I'm watching them, and the joke works, and I'm so thrilled. But I didn't, I forgot, I was on like next or like, like in the next ten fifteen minutes, and I had one of the best because I wasn't worried about my set at all. I was more worried about Lou's. <laughs> So those kinds of things are fine. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and then you realize you should, I, I, why was I never panicked when I was in a tavern full of crazy killers and, and doing stuff for free? And yet when I'm at the St. Denis and everyone's thrilled to see me, this is when I panic? It, it didn't make yeah. sense. It, I had it backwards. It, it's, 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 it's so, it's, once you get over that, it's so relaxing to be in front of people that respect you. That's where you're at home, I guess, because you, yeah, you, that's where you should be, but not, not your yeah. first time, but you should learn that over your first time. Yeah. You won't talk to your neighbors, but if you're there in the audience, then for sure. Oh, I still, what the hell, Lord, I've, I've ditched a lot of big professional. I've, I've had more fun in Halifax throwing the show while I'm on stage and the crowd loves it. But uh, what, what do you, you know, what do you mean throw in the show? You know, when, 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 when those big boom mics come in uh, or boom cameras yeah. and, and just, and then, you know, start talking to the camera mm. or make fun of somebody in the audience, all the stuff that they told you not to do. <laughs> I, I, every shot, I love doing that. There are no rules in Mike Wilmot's world. No, not at all, except for the yeah. ones that my wife uh, every day lays them down and I, I follow them <laughs> to the letter. And we have one rule here, and that's another cold read. So you got to scroll down to the bottom. Oh, you got, oh, you can have fun a, with this. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, okay. You said, yeah. This is super fit, Mike Wilmot. That's right. Not just fit, super fit. And you're listening to something called What's So Funny? And only said by Andy Kindler. What's so funny? This is funny. You call this funny? <laughs> With the two slubs, Guy and Sam on CFRO 100.5 FM, Vancouver Co-op Radio. Huh? Yeah. Hey. Hey. (laughs) See, we've all bonded and we hit the 46 minute mark and I'm, 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 yeah, I'm a. This I'm is a horror uh, right now. You you guys you guys warm me up. Good. Well, you Mike, are, I gotta ask you oh, a question. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. I gotta I just have to ask. You've done the dirty show in Montreal a million times. Who did you see perform that you were like, holy shit, I did not expect that? Oh, uh, uh, it's got to be uh, 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 Otto and George. <laughs> it, it's got to okay. be Otto and George. Yeah. 
uh, only because the, the whole psycho weirdness of the puppet, and uh, for those that don't know, the dirtiest, look it up, Google it. It, it was so dirty. I, it knocked air out of me. And you were expecting like this corny ventriloquist act? I didn't know. I sort of knew it was coming. I had listened to a, a, a tape or two over yeah. the years, but to see it live <laughs> and, and, and to hear, uh, in fact, we, the, the just for last toured us one once they've only toured the nasty show once and they've never done it again. <laughs> Because of the letters and the complaints. Really? And it was it was me. I was hosting. Slayton was closing. Bobby Slayton. Perfect. And Otto and George uh, were in the middle. Jesus. And I Richards on Richards, or Richards on Richards, yeah, sorry. Yeah. In van. I'm hosting. And I open and I'm doing some dirty bits, but my dirty bits, which aren't, you know, terrifyingly dirty. And people were making the groining o oh, oh, oh noises. Oh, and I no. hate those <laughs> dirty, dirty MC guys that go like, you, you, hey, if you think this is dirty, wait till, but I really meant it. Look at, this isn't dirty. <laughs> and I look in the wings <laughs> and there's fucking Otto and George just standing there like psychopaths. He goes on stage. First thing out of the dummy's head. Hey, you ever see a fat chick with her head dyed blonde? That's like putting whipped cream on dog shit. And then <laughs> an audience made a noise that I've never heard in my life. It wasn't an ooh. It was a, it was a, ah, oh. like he, like he kicked them. <laughs> I know I'm not saying anything other than that's what he said. And that's the noise they made. I've never seen that before. Wow. I've, ne I've wow. never seen anyone react to an act like they did. That. And what made it such a funny fucking act is after he said that horrible thing, Otto turns to the puppet and goes, hey, there's ladies here. <laughs> and I fell down the stairs. I was laughing so fucking hard. I fell down the stairs. Oh, oh I got there might be. Well, he actually said, there might be overweight women here. <laughs> Or something, and I lost my shit. I think I saw oh. that show. Now that you mention it, yeah, Richards on Richards. That was around two thousand, the first ever. Uh, oh, easy, yeah, JFL yeah. NFL tour, and they did all their theme shows on a different night at Richards on Richards. That's right. That uh, Mike McDonald was doing, like, not the relationship show, maybe just a funny show or something. Yeah, there was. I was. That's there, right. Derek Edwards was on one. John Wing was on uh, one. That's right. And uh, yeah, we all met up in airports going, how are they? How, how are they? Were they okay? But everyone knew about the Richard on Richards. And there was a black female comic on the Dirty Show, too, or the Nasty Show. Uh, really funny. Big girl? No. Nope. Thea? No, nope. she always carried her handbag with her. Oh, fuck. Um, she had one name or missed somebody. or Maybe yeah. not. Oh, there's a few. Yeah, uh, she was great. It wasn't Miss Pat. No, it wasn't. It was before that. Maybe uh, maybe she didn't have just one. Thea Vidal was uh, a, a, a great uh, dirty uh, comic. She, we were out in the back uh, laneway of the old of the club soda, and it's a crack alley. It's a terrifying alleyway, <laughs> and she's wearing a Bob Mackie gown. And it is like it, and, and she's an ample woman, and she's wearing this. It's you know, it's it's like a it's like a nudie suit. It's like it's it's all uh, sparkles and glitter, and it's incredible. Wow. It's like five six grand worth of glitter. And the guy walks up to her and goes, "Can I get a couple of rocks?" <laughs> and Steve Vidal goes, "You motherfucker! You think I'm a crack? I'm wearing a Bob Mackie motherfucker!" And she. Scares that he, 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 who, what crackhead ever ran to someone screaming Bob Mackey at them? Let <laughs> alone he spoke English, which was weird. Uh, yeah, well, you know, well, he was, he was a, he was a bilingual crackhead. That's the whole problem. Oh. Quebec. Eh? They're too educated. They're, they'll come at you. Both sides. Yeah, Derek Edwards had a great bit about that. What was it? I can't, I'm not oh, okay. repeat it. He's a friend. You can make them come back and do it. Okay. <laughs> what for now? What, uh, what was, uh, I don't know anything about you getting into comedy. 
because you were just always this presence in the on the comedy Canadian <laughs> comedy scene. But like, what was high school Mike like, or getting into stand up? Like, I was I I wanted to be in comedy as as far back as I can actually remember. I wanted to, I, uh, whether it be a comedy actor. Yeah, well, which you have been, or, yeah. Or, or stand-up comedy. I was originally, because uh, uh, Second City was here. So when I was a very, very bad student in high school, I, 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 I wanted to take a Second City class. Then I saw Richard Pryor live in concert to movie and thought, good, I can just do it by myself. And then, and right around that same time, Yuck Yucks opened. Ah. The first one, I was like eighteen, and uh, was that's this it. In Toronto. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's all I wanted to do. I was a dishwasher at the original Yuck Yucks in Toronto. Huh. I I was I was uh, I was staff and I was uh, an amateur comic. That's all I wanted to be was a comic. Sad, really, when you think about it, because the ability, the things I could have done for humanity. You know, I could have been so many great things. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I work in strip clubs, basically. I'm doing like, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a film monk. <laughs> but uh, we, the, think back to those early days, and you know, and I still have the uh, the uh, the Yuck Yucks album. But I know there are comics that maybe right. didn't hit it, but you might have just found hilarious. You know, are there are there people that you used to love and just thought they're going to be like big stars, and then they just quit for whatever reason? Um. I, I don't really pay attention to it in that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's always been mostly guys that I love and then guys that became stars. Okay. And a lot of the ones that became stars, I really didn't know to begin with because a lot of those guys are, 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 are really motivated. And most of the guys that make me laugh are <laughs> Not so idiots like me. No, okay. just the funniest man in the world is Boyd Banks. Right. That's it. That he's the funniest. But you ask anybody, he's the funniest man in the world. Now I know he's from and, Vancouver, but I've never seen him perform, and I've only heard great things about him. He he, he worked a lot in Vancouver. He's oh, he's, yeah. he's just he's, he's a maniac. He's 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 the fun. He, I was recently saying to a friend, of, of my ten top moments laughing, whether it was uh, not, not on someone on stage or just being with someone. Uh, four or five of those are Boyd. Yeah, <laughs> I, like yeah, like no, I'm I, I'm 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 lucky. I'm a, I'm a comic. I'm I'm not an audience member. The people that make me laugh have nothing. To, I know all the tricks. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm not laughing at those people. I'm I'm laughing in the green room. I'm laughing. I'm laughing for a whole different reason. Yeah, I know. Uh, Brent talked great about Boyd. Uh, oh, yeah, he's a comics comic, right? Oh, but Budsky and I, who get into giggle fits, man, we toured together. That was one of the biggest giggle fits of my life. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a, a boy puts us both, it just puts us both in the hospital. Wow. Yeah. And it's not just to stay, it's just him being Boyd. Yeah. Like, Boyd was my roommate for a while in East York in, in Toronto years ago. We were in a basement apartment in a bungalow in East York. And Every day at like five to eleven in the morning, he would pound on my door, going "Plinko, plink," and we had to watch it. Watching Prices Right with Boyd Banks is the funniest hour in the world. <laughs> Watching Star Trek's ne Next Generation with him, having him sing the theme song. These are all the funniest things in the world, and I'm thrilled that the, the crowds will never see this. You have to have a special VIP ticket to see it. You got it. And I got it, yeah. And and Butsky's got it and a bunch of us have got it. Derek Edwards and I and 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 Boyd and Alan Alan Watt. Boyd had us, and this is so long ago, where I, I thought I might have to go to the hospital. I was laughing so fucking hard. And it was just hanging out. <laughs> we were just hanging out. So yeah, are those the best. Yeah, I, laughs? I laugh. I laugh. I, I laugh at completely different shit. Those are the best laughs. Those natural ones. Those everyday ones. Oh right? yeah, the ones that this whole business is based on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you still there? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I was. Sorry. You, know, you know what happens is, I, I as I get more relaxed with you fellas, I get more into my loungy chair. 
<laughs> and then the, then the sound goes out. <laughs> well, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're yeah. nearing the end, but I wanted to talk about uh, Pete Tong and your acting career. Now, you've done lots. Uh, you've done lots. But, you know, after that movie, it was so big, it didn't no, really catapult you. It was me. It was me. I, 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 uh, I, if, I, if an actor knew how I threw this away, they would hate me. But I, I didn't care. The only thing I've done since is stuff off that somehow. I did a picture with, with um, Jay Baruchel because I did that movie. I did another movie Mike did because of that movie. I did a TV series with Mike because of that movie. But I've never really... Uh, gone. acting is very intimidating to me, and uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's not my favorite so thing to do. You, you are a natural, and I was wondering, watching your reel, did you were you trained at all? Oh no, uh, Mike uh, Dows, who did uh, uh, Pete Tong, uh, he he taught me how to act while we were filming, like or at least. Act for 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 the yeah. camera, and then a friend of mine uh, wrote a play after that. So I wanted to learn how to act. So rather than, because I knew I couldn't listen to an acting coach or a teacher, <laughs> I, I know me. You know you. So I did a friend of mine's play, thinking that'll teach me how to do uh, the stage acting, which it sort of did. And I thought if I learned stage acting, that maybe the TV film acting would be easier. And that it's apples and oranges. That would didn't. That, that didn't work but uh no i'm still i just i'm i'm gonna be the voice of and it, i can't talk about it too much but but a, a child a british children's cartoon well that's perfect which i'm super excited about because you don't have to wear makeup and you can read it yeah and you <laughs> but try not to drop the c word yeah well no you, you can they just take it out okay <laughs> 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 saying that now that I'm watching my little voice vibration bars go across on my video screen, I just hold on for just give me a second, guys. Okay, ready? Cunt. Oh, that's what it looks like. Okay, that was that's neat. I've actually isolated it. That's it's a hard C. It is. It's, yeah. But it doesn't it doesn't it, it should be a bigger bar. <laughs> what was that show that it was it looked like a sitcom? You were fighting an easy chair, you were fighting to, how to work it. Oh Jesus. What was that? That was called uh, All the Comforts. And it was a CBC sitcom shot in your town. Okay. In Van. Uh, my wife was played by Deborah Thacker, who was in the Christopher Guest movies. Brilliant actress. Uh -huh. uh, Gary Oldring's playing my son. The cast was great. Uh, the writing was a bit from the 80s. And uh, it never stood a chance. <laughs> How many did you do? We tried as hard as we could to make that as good as we could, but uh, it, it was like a, it was like a, an old uh, Roseanne's uh, uh, show that did, didn't make it. Well, I got the vibe of uh, All in the Family, and you were like the Archie Bunker, and you're... well, it's, it's it had a lot of all of that in it, yeah. and I think the best stuff we did was never on the show, and. Uh, uh, there's something weird about working for uh, or working in a in, in a group of people where many of them, so many of them are disinterested, <laughs> and I think that's uh, the CBC in a nutshell. <laughs> so many people just don't give a fuck. Yeah, because it's it's a government gig, you know, and I'm not blaming anybody. And you know, uh, you know, uh, shit creek. Look how great it did, oh but that's not because of the CBC. I mean, who the fuck are we fooling here? That's because of Eugene Levy. That's because of his son. Yeah, CBC is doing little to nothing. They're probably trying to tell those guys to shut the fuck up every day for the last few years. <laughs> CBC does nothing but ruin stuff. Well, CTV's no better, are they? Well, so, well, they're all of them are shit. All of them look look. Brent. Showed them, look, you can do it. You'd figure they would then let the creatives take a bigger part in a production, but none of them learned. No. Look at uh, the kids in the hall. That, that that should teach them. Look, let the creatives take control. We that way, you know, we don't need Broadway video behind it. Just 
just let the creatives take control and shut the fuck up. And they, they don't, they don't, they don't. They all want to get involved. They, they all pretend they're creative. And that's what ruined it. None of them are. So CBC gets no credit for Kids in the Hall? Well, no, they, they go for it. They try for credit. Yeah. But it's like a friend of mine said about Showcase. This is, this is how sad Canadian television is. Showcase TV, don't mind when you've mistaken them for Showtime. <laughs> like, they won't correct you. Yeah. No. Like, oh, I hear you heard Showtime. Yep. Yes, I am. <laughs> like, right away. But that, I think that's what makes us cute and, and stupid. We should embrace that more. But even when we do, which I thought Mark Little's show, uh, Cavendish, was brilliant. Oh, I didn't see that one. Oh, Christ. It was funny. As other, I, don't, I didn't see a lot. Of, I, I read this. I read for it. And uh, the script was funny as hell. But I think they got rid of it because people that were actually living in Cavendish said, this isn't like our town. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pathetic. Not uh, proof positive, right there. Yeah, it's 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 well. Here, okay, uh, a young one, uh, Lauren Michaels. I'd like to do a show on Saturday nights. Maybe do it live. CBC. Nah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I got this idea. I, 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 you know, I have a boat. I like to retrieve uh, logs, and there'll be natives in it. Okay, you're on. It has to be in Newfoundland, though, right? Oh, well, that's I love that. <clears throat> Excuse me again. If I ever pitched anything for CBC television, I would go, like, we're going to set this in a gritty, gritty inner city world of, of uh, St. John. Yeah. <laughs> I try to make it like this. <laughs> They're like Gotham. Also set in the 1800s. Yeah. Oh, of course. Because we got all those outfits from the, uh, yeah. and the Green Gables. We got <laughs> Everyone wears the watch. Uh, that's all they got. You guys want a bowler? Oh, if they sold hats, they'd make more money. <laughs> uh, Mike, uh, you always have stand-up, though, so you you can say <laughs> screw it to acting. Well, there's that. And uh, I'm still acting, but uh, only when it's, you know, I'm lucky. Only when people go, well, he, he would do it good. Yeah, so they come to you, and you go, sure, yeah. what, what the hell? I'm not doing the anything. The thing I just got was I know I, someone said, no, you, you, we drew something to look like, not you, but you do the voice of this thing we drew. Yeah. I did. And that's, that's ideal. That's my whole life, it turns out, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Ideally, if they could film it with you sitting on your porch, uh, it would be perfect. Not film. That way, you know, uh, underpants. I don't have to, you know, I could be naked. <laughs> yeah, let's. But that's terrible. I could do it naked. What the hell? Let's do uh, naked on my porch. Perfect. Let's uh, let's go out on that visual. Mike Wilmot naked on his porch. Uh, and, and you know, it's not bad. Uh, it could have been ten years ago. It would have been worse. <laughs> we already talked about your father's penis. So why? Not? Oh, it was a beauty. It was a beauty. <laughs> Mike, great talking with you. You guys were a lot of fun. I uh, hope it didn't keep you up too late there in Ontario, Toronto. Well, actually, it is almost 11. No, it's 11.04. Yeah. Oh, you son mm -hmm. of a bitch. There, I, there goes tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, kids. I'm going to really hang up now so we don't have to do any thank yous at the end. We are saying thank you and goodbye right now. Thank you.